Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Mark Fixes Stuff. In this one we're going to be changing the KB1 Molex connector on this 48K Spectrum which was kindly donated to me by Scott Beechel from 8-Bit Boogie, a group on Facebook, and um, is going to um, become the new mainboard in a 48K for Preston Thomas from Spectrum Forever, another Facebook group. Um, what we can see here is what I can only assume is a mid 90s mod uh, to try and get a keyboard working. Uh, you can see these are clearly the wires from the inside of a Cat5 cable um, and they've been um, glued in place right there which has obviously ruined the keyboard connector. Well these days there's replacement membranes available. Um, you can also get replacement Molex connectors as you can see here which is a lovely thing Indeed. So without further ado, I'll show you how to remove this and solder a new one in place. I'm going to use my new um, solder pump, which is apparently Japanese video engineer quality, which is all very nice. Um, it's got a little uh, heat resistant um, tubing on the end. So um, here we go. Now the first thing we have to do is to remove this Molex connector off of this board with the minimum amount of damage. Um, I'm not sure how much glue has run underneath this, so I'm hoping not to lift any of these traces, but um, should be okay, all things being equal. Um, I'm going to try a technique that I usually use for removing these with a minimum of uh, desoldering time, which is to pop the pins out of the back. So if we turn it around, we can see down here that these pins are keyed and they have a tiny little um, uh, reverse indentation that holds them on the board. So if we apply some pressure on the socket and push those with a pin, what we should be able to do is slip the pins out of that socket. But first we'll take these wires out. Okay. Just going to carefully pull these wires off this socket, making sure that there's no um, super glue attached to any of the traces on the board, that would be fairly disastrous. Okay. I've checked the electrical integrity of the pins on the back of the socket and it's all fine. But, um, obviously this isn't going to fly and um, with the amount of this um, cyanoacrylic adhesive, otherwise known as super glue, um, vapor that's coated the board and everything. I'm fairly sure the contacts in there are going to be coated as well. Kind of a silly thing to do with this, to be honest, because um, hot glue would have been a better choice. Off. Come on, mind you, they're properly in there, they're not falling out. Okay, so there we go there. that craps off of there. Now I've seen some people advocating just rocking the socket and breaking it off but that's dangerous because you've killed the through plating on the board and the through plating isn't the best on these boards to begin with in my opinion. So um, what we're going to do is use my technique for um, pushing those pins through. And I hope this works otherwise it'll look very silly on video which happens quite a lot to be honest. So um, here we go, what I'm doing here is I'm pushing down on the pin to push that lug in and we're not really bothered about damaging the lugs so I'm, I'm going to try and actually just bend them all in because we're replacing the whole socket it doesn't matter so much we're using a bobby pin here by the way I dropped it we're using a bobby pin so I've got something to grip onto on the end sorry for the shaky camera you know I love you but I'm trying to um, Get these off with a minimum of damage. So I'm just pushing that in. Have another go there. All right, let's have a go and see if any of those are letting up. Yeah, there we go. Now you just heard some glue underneath there, which is always a bit worry. So we can see that some of the pins have let loose. I think that that one there probably hasn't. There's a big lump of um, super glue in this one. And pushing down dead, dead hard. Apologies for the camera. It's really hard to sort of work around the 
camera. So you can see what I'm doing anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera out of the way and get that last pin freed up and then I'll remove it. Okay. Okay, and we're back. Um, what I found was there's a large lump of glue underneath the socket just there. You can see it. So um, that's not going to allow us to get that pin out because it's like basically set solid in there. So what we've got here, can you see the the actual um, leads of the socket going into the board there. One came through here. This is the best way to do it if it hasn't been glued, is to just pop those through, lift it off, and then you can desolder them at your leisure. But what we're going to have to do here is a gentle rocking motion to break those off angularly at the top of the connector. And this is the safest way to do it, okay, for this particular one. So, um, yeah. There we go, we can see now there's quite a lot of I'll just whip that round the right way and we'll have a quick closer look there and we can see that big lump of glue there. Um, might get away without removing that and I really don't want to use any harsh sort of acetone or anything to remove that off of there. Acetone is nail varnish remover by the way and we'll take um, super glue off. Remove the board out of the case. Um, you will probably find that yours has a screw for the middle. But this one's been taken out already. Okay. And um, yeah, just basically go around the bottom, find the KB1 connector, which is here. The reverse side is here. And that is it. We're just going to take those out. One, oh, that one went a bit astray. Turn that one off a bit. Two, I must say, this solder socket is so much better than the traditional um, hard tipped ones that I've used in the past. It's taking the lead out on everything. Really easy to operate. You do need to think in two directions at once as usual. But, um, okay, and the last one is here. As usual, I make my usual excuse. It's quite difficult to work around the, um, the camera. So, um, please do excuse the slight mess that I've got there, but um, that's what you get for watching my videos. So, uh, yeah, don't like it, tune out. Just joking. <laughs> okay, um, there's a lead still in there that I couldn't quite see because of the camera. Okay, I hate that. A little bit more. You have to be quite careful with spectrum boards because they um, don't like being overheated. Neither do I. Yeah, right, should be able to take that out now. My side screws. Use them as temporary grips. That one's formed through the board already. Yeah. Oh, that's the longer one, so we'll switch that over. Okay. Okay, right, this lead here, oh, okay, it's not quite through. If I heat this, it'll probably just drop out. Where are we? Are we there? So do excuse the slightly slovenly nature of the iron because it's jolly difficult actually <laughs> working around the camera. But you get the drift. Come on. Oh, it's stuck again. The joy of leaded solder though is that it's really easy to work with. 
Right, so um, those holes are pretty clear actually. So it's a bit sloppier on camera than it really is. Mm. If it was terrible, I'd use a bit of desoldering braid, but it's just a couple of little solder splashes that have dropped. And have dropped down during the process. So I'm just going to clean it up a bit, and then um, be back. I can't clean it up now on the camera, guys. So uh, you just have to take my word for it. Okay, so I've cleaned it up a bit, and can I just say how much worse it actually looks through the camera than it does in real life? So I've tried to clean it up so that you guys don't flame me and thumb down the video. Um, but just for safety's sake, what we're going to do is we're going to check that there's no continuity between any of these points. Nothing, 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 nothing. Just so you know, I'm not cheating. So that's got a little bit of um, coating off there, as you can see. So we'll just check that that works to that point up there. Lovely. Uh, we'll check this one while we're here. And this one. Okay. And why not do this one? We're here. You know. These all look good. So, you know, it, it's. Um, as clean as you're going to get it, I mean, remember this is an old board and I've just taken a super glued socket off, so cut me some slack boys and girls, don't want to be sexist. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to fit this socket. The replacement socket looks like this, okay, just so you can see exactly what you're dealing with. It's got some leads that go through the board, very similar to the one that we've just removed. Now the golden rule is don't solder the bloody thing in the wrong way around because you'll have to desolder it and that's more stress on the board. And the nice thing to note is that the K keyboard 2 connector is basically in a reverse orientation for touching the contact. So, keyboard 2 here, yeah. Um, if you've got keyboard 1 next to it, you don't want the contacts on the same side of the socket they have to be reversed because it's a it's a reverse component membrane okay so that is basically going to go in there now there are two sets of mounting holes on these usually what I do is set this one because it's set a bit further back into the other set of mounting holes but unfortunately as you can see there is a big old lump of glue over the top of that and um, this probably is going to go in a little bit wonky yeah it's going to go in a little bit wonky as we can see but um, I'm just going to bend that so that it looks good rather than risk um, traces and stuff by removing that I'll, I'll just put that in slightly skew it with the keyboard socket one in place and you can see the reverse contact orientation to keyboard 2 KB2 we're going to flip it over I'm going to pop something underneath to support that to stop it falling out the very handy packet from my brand new desoldering roddy thing, whatever you want to call it. People keep asking me why I use a green mat, by the way, and it's to protect the table. It's that simple. Okay, so uh, let's grab some solder out of the toolbox, leaded solder or lead, tin lead amalgam. Um, you don't need to worry about using lead is solder it is not illegal regard um, regardless of what people tell you okay. yeah. missed that one I'll never run at that working around the camera bit of a bind always do both ends first really heat the component and the pad at the same time so that the solder flows evenly onto both Five. Okay. One in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, you little bugger. And this one here. One, two, three, four, five. Why am I counting to five? That's how long I take. I allow the lead to actually heat up and the pad to heat up. 
um, I'm operating at 345 degrees Celsius as you can see and here's a little close up of what we've just done so um, yeah I'm not the best solder in the world to be honest but I get the job done I'll just do a little continuity check no, to make sure I haven't bridged anything it's all good Here we are with the replaced socket. Now there's a slight angle to it, I'm not going to lie, but it was better than having to go through the um, glue behind it. Um, all checks out continuity wise. I've checked all the points to all these pins and good continuity, not too much mucking about. Um, and that is basically it. That will be ready now for your new membrane. Um, as you can see around the back, everything looks fairly spondy. Um, I don't think there's much else to show you here, that's replacing one, um, keyboard 2 is exactly the same process except there's more sockets, uh, no not more sockets, there's more um, legs. Um, so this is Mark from Mark Fixes Stuff signing out and telling you to subscribe to get your fix. And I'll see you all again in the next exciting episode, bye bye.